In, in the beginning, the music industry wasn't great news for music artists. We saw a crash in sales, a growth, uh, an epidemic of piracy. Uh, but today it seems as if the music industry is really reinventing itself. Not around old labels and the old music executives who ran perhaps the industry into the ground, but a new generations of platforms and services that are providing massive value for music artists. One of those platforms is uh, Moon Toast, and I have uh, its CTO and co-founder Marcus Whitney here to talk about what Moon Toast can do to provide value for artists selling their products on the digital network. Marcus, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Thank you for having me. Well, that was a nice introduction, wasn't it? It was fantastic. Spot on. <laughs> well, prove it, Marcus. What I'm are ready. you really doing to reinvent the industry? And why are you enabling uh, singers, songwriters to make money on the digital platform? Yeah. So, you know, you talked about how digital really and the Internet had a pretty destructive force on the music industry. Would initially. you say that was fair? I would say that is fair. <clears throat> um, because there were no tools in the hands of the musicians, the music industry at large, to really do anything about it, frankly. Um, the, the tools were rogue, um, they were not above board, they were not business grade tools. Um, you and mean in the sort of in the nap state? Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Um, and what we've seen over time, MySpace was probably the first real good look at how digital and the, in, and the internet could really serve the music industry, um, is there's this amazing ability to uh, disrupt the broadcast mediums and the communication platforms between the fans and the artists. And that is revolutionary. And you see so many companies that have come out to innovate around that. Um, and you know, a, a host of different marketing and, and different solutions. What we really focus on is providing that, that critical piece of the artist and fan relationship, which is the, the buying part. Um, you know, there's an ecstasy that fans get when they buy from an artist that they love, when they buy something directly from them. And the artist has that ecstasy too, right? Uh, if the sales come in nicely, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so there's a happiness out of that. You know, there's a, there's a, you, can, you have the ability to, deli to deliver happiness if you can actually effectively sell to your fans. Um, it, it becomes even more happiness if what you're selling is unique, special. It creates a deeper bond between the fan and the artist. And, and then it needs to come through a channel that the fan feels like is an authentic channel between you and the art, between the artist and, and the fan. And so that's what we've done. We've looked across the landscape. We've found the most authentic and effective channels for driving those offers directly to those fans, engaging them, and then getting them to not just transact directly with the artist, but then endorse out to all their friends and expand that cycle of happiness. Right? It may be discovery for some fans who didn't necessarily know the artist initially, but for people who may be a friend of that person and they do love that artist, it's a great endorsement and it's the ability for that artist to now reach generations deep. Well, Marcus, before uh, we get into the, the product itself, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about Moon Toast. How long has it been around? How many people work there? And where are you based? Yeah, so two and a half years. Uh, we've, uh, we've got about 24 people right now. We're headquartered in Boston. Um, so Boston, why not uh, Silicon Valley? Uh, we were founded in Nashville. Um, and I'll quickly just say we, uh, we did a retained search. We were looking for a CEO. We found the right person. Um, and he was based in Boston. And wow, so, so you based the company where the CEO is. We Who is the CEO? We certainly did. His name is Blair Heavey, um, experienced executive. He's had two I hope IPOs. he's good if you're going to go all the way there. Two IPOs is not bad. A couple of other exits as well. He's, he's pretty smart. <laughs> Music industry guy? Um, actually, no, but e commerce and affiliate network. And you were the co-founder and the CTO. Correct. What's your background before you did this? Uh, my background before this was I was a director of technology at an email marketing company out of Nashville called Emma. Um, so I was a partner there, um, built that up over a four-year period. And actually in 2007, I went to South by Southwest the year that Twitter exploded and knew right then and there that social was going to have an incredible impact on the way that people connected with each other and decided to um, resign my role at Emma to move into the more social aspects of, of the web. So Moon Dance, uh, Moon Toast. Uh, sorry, Moon Toast. Uh -huh. uh, Moon Toast is a um, is, is self-funded. Do you have angel? No, no. Um, so we, we we did initially um, raise a round of angel uh, funding, uh, but we are funded uh, by a VC firm in Nashville uh, called the Martin Companies. Um, we uh, just closed our Series A in December. How much uh, was that? Six for? million. 
Um, so that was covered and press release on all that good stuff. And the product, Marcus, mm -hmm. what is it? Um, it's, really, it's, it's really two core things today. It's a series of different applications um, that allow you to do both engagement and commerce in social networks, ad networks, affiliate networks, on mobile and on your website, right? all deployed from our platform, totally branded to fit your look and feel, and can sell and distribute digital physical goods bundles of those as well as other engagement capabilities. And then there's analytics on the back end. We have both a freemium and a premium version of our analytics um, that really marries the social and, and engagement data as well as demographics along with the, the transactions. So you truly get to see how every single social post actually impacted you know, your ability to, to close a deal. So this is a, a soup to nuts product for social media for musicians. Absolutely. More, come on. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you said it. I, I was just giving you the, well, I, the but guess. I, 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 want, I want details of the meal, what comes between the soup and the nuts. Well, you know, I mean, our best practice is a very, is a very important part of it. Um, you know, we've learned a lot over the last two years. We have had the, the benefit of working with um, some fantastic um, artists and bands. Examples? Uh, sure. Uh, so we launched uh, our, our relationship with, um, with Big Machine Records, which is the record label uh, in Nashville that has Taylor Swift, Reba McIntyre, Rascal Flatts. Um, in 2009, it's been a great relationship working with them. Uh, we also have we recently launched uh, Lady Annabellum, who just won the Grammy for uh, Best Country Album. Um, we launched the pre-sale on on Facebook for um, uh, uh, Kanye and Jay Z West for Watch the Throne. Um, we have an upcoming launch of a, a comeback uh, Grammy win award winning hip hop artist uh, that I won't mention right now, but uh, we're very excited to launch that as well. Mm -hmm. So so we've we've had our, our fair share of kind of marquee artists that we've worked with. And how uh, exportable is your platform to other industries? Can it only work in music? Actually, um, we, work, we work in more than just music. Um, we love the music industry, but we work in the publishing industry where we, uh, we serve uh, brands like Time Fortune, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan Audio. Um, we also work in the retail industry. Um, we work in the, in the celebrity space. Um, so yeah, I mean, really, it's all about affinity brands. It's about brands who love their fans and want to use effective, authentic channels to be able to reach those fans and deliver happiness. Is there a contradiction between authentic channels and social media? Isn't social media by definition inauthentic? Absolutely not. I mean, authentic, authenticity, author, if I'm the person and I'm posting, that's it. It's authentic, absolutely. And it's really easy to use? Very easy to use, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as easy as it would be to maybe post a YouTube video or drop any single ad that you would typically drop into, you know, double click, that's as easy it is as it is to use our platform. On the back end, putting together our different apps is like putting together an email. So it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's differentiated. So are the artists themselves using it, or are the, are the publicists at the labels helping them? Not really the publicists, um, but the marketing uh, teams are, are, are heavy using it. The e-commerce teams are heavy using it. Um, in, the, in, the, in the case of some of the more enterprising artists, they themselves are the ones doing the work. But yes, yeah, so labels, management companies, agencies all coming together. So what exactly is it? Is it offering an integrated marketing strategy? Because after all, an artist can just go on Twitter and tweet. Sure. Um, so, so what's most effective is that we leverage the channel to actually deliver the experience where they're not, it, it's an immersive experience. The transaction happens at the point of impression. It's much easier to actually show, but just to you know verbalize. You it. mean transaction, meaning the sale of the, yeah. of the song. Yeah, sale of the song, or you know, uh, a song in exchange for an email, or anything, any transaction that would happen, right, um, happens at the point of impression. So it's not like an ad where you click off to some other site, and now you're not on Facebook anymore, and you're having to deal with some other environment. Everything happens in the social context, in the context of the conversation that the brand is having with you, that the artist is having with you. So, the so, whole, so that, you know what I mean there? So, so the purpose of the platform then is not really social, it's to generate revenue from social. It's, 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 to, it's, to, it's to determine the, the social ROI, um, which we, we have our own model for that called return on fan, which is really focusing on the impact that every single fan has on a brand. Um, Driving revenue is one way to measure return on fan. It's not the only way. Um, rise of engagement, growth of your total fan base, um, you know, gro growth of your, your email list, what, whatever metrics you, you define as the key results that you need, that's what we want you to be able to achieve on our platform. Revenue always helps. It always helps to you know, take a report to the, to the C-levels and say, you know, in addition to all these likes, we just also generated, you know, fifty thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars. They definitely like to see that. So, Marcus, you raised six million dollars. Mm -hmm. You've got well, a few 
around 20, a little over 20 people. You're mm -hmm. based in Boston. Are you profitable? Uh, we are not profitable yet. When do you want to become profitable? When do you think you will become profitable? Um, maybe in the next year. I mean, we really are very bullish on our product, and so we are investing heavily in our we product. We always hear that though, in Silicon Valley. Whenever you ask a company yeah. that isn't profitable, they'll say, well, maybe at the end of the year. Do you have real evidence that you will be profitable? We're, we're making a pretty good clip of revenue right now. Um, but that's not our focus. Our focus right now is to build the best product in the market because we're creating tremendous value that's very, very different from anyone else in the market, both in our engagement applications as well as our analytics. So we're not necessarily that focused on the profitability as we know there's a very big IPO happening from a company that is not profitable. Um, Which one's that? I, I don't know. <laughs> do, do you know who's doing the IPO recently? No. There are a couple out there. There are a couple. There are a couple. Um, but you, you're, you're, you're bullish on your prospects. I am very bullish, yeah. Do you have any competition? Um, you know, we, we seem to, um, I don't want to say that we don't have competition. We, we do, um, what, we, what we're finding is that the, the customers who end up working with us are looking for a more sophisticated solution. Um, and so there, there are companies in the market who do uh, similar types of things, but they may not be as integrated. Um, or, or frankly, like I said, as sophisticated or as focused on this return on fan and social ROI um, realization as, as Moon Toast is, and so um, we, we 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 tend to to stand alone after a couple conversations. It, it gets you know it gets pretty easy pretty quick. Whether or not they want to work with us, or they're really just looking for a way to you know drive traffic to a site and sell some stuff. And Marcus, finally, the name Moon Toast. Why? Um, because our investors said we're either going to go to the moon or we're going to be toast. Perfect. Thank you so much for appearing on TechCrunch. Cheers. Thank you. Excellent.